Uh, the urgent breaking news of the world today is that Vladimir Putipu has had a conversation Reno with um, Tucker Carlson. And it was interesting. It was interesting for a lot of reasons. Um, but I think the big meme is that Tucker Carlson immediately opens up the inter interview with the most obvious question. He asks Putin, why did you invade Ukraine? And Putin responds by asking him, are we having an adult conversation or are we doing a TV show? And Put uh, Tucker Carlson, I mean, answers, I, I don't think anybody in the world would would say, oh, we're just having a silly TV show thing. Don't take me seriously. So he answers the only way that you're allowed to in that situation. He says, uh, this is a serious conversation. So Putin re oh, responds. There's a, oh God. Well, let me find this real quick. Let's see. There's a, I'm making a, this is effectively how um, Putin responds to that question. Well, this is going to take a long time, so you may want to get some snacks. No, no, that's all right. I think I can wait for it. Well, I'm going to get food. Thousands of years ago, before the dawn of man as we knew him. So that, that's literally what he does. It's not even a joke. Over a thousand years ago, um, he starts with the, with the description of the Kievan Rus. And if you don't know, the modern Russian state started not in Moscow, it started in Kiev, in what is now Ukraine. Um, but it was at the time, it was just a city-state. It conquered a lot of the modern-day Ukraine, uh, so on and so forth. It traded hands between emperors and czars um, until it was incorporated into imperial Russia uh, under modern-day Russia, which was started by the Muscovy uh, dynasty and then incorporated Novgorod and other... Uh, it fought back the the Mongol hordes. Literally, Russia was where in Ukraine where all the Mongols attacked Europe. It was a bad time. It was a bad time to be in Russia for a very long time because of the Mongols. Anyways, Russia eventually fought back and and kicked out the Mongols and the horde collapsed and so on and so forth. Uh, but he explains all of this, and it's really remarkable because um, he explains all of his history and he knows exactly which dynasties held which at what times. He knows about. Um, about Catherine the Great and all this stuff. He's like obviously very interested in history. And he uh, points out something I didn't know where he says, uh, you studied history because apparently Tucker Carlson is a history major uh, before he became a political pundit. Um, so it's very interesting. And it lasts 45 minutes. And I'm just thinking like Tucker Carlson is like the most popular conservative media pundit in the world right now. Um, so there are, there were probably millions of old um, beer bellied, conservative gun-toting hicks that watched the president of Russia for 45 minutes explain the history of Eastern Europe. People who until two years ago would have been literally unable at gunpoint to identify where Ukraine is on the map were suddenly uh, exposed to... <laughs> Uh, thousands of years of Eastern European history. And now, if if a person who had no idea about Ukraine or Russia sat down and listened to Putin explain how Ukraine became uh, the Slavic state and how Muscovy took over the uh, and became Russia and then incorporated Ukraine back into it, if they watched all this conversation, over the hamster, of course, um, if they watched this conversation, they likely know more about... And I, I'm going to say this. This might be a contentious opinion. They probably know more about... Oh, fuck. I fucked everything up. How about this? Okay, perfect. They probably know more about um, Russian history than they do American history at this point. And it was sort of a long roundabout way for Putin to explain that Russia has not just a historical boundary and historical land claim to Ukraine, but also... And he ends it kind of strongly, I think, the, the whole interview. He explains that even after the war, Ukrainians and Russians will eventually um, love each other again because he says that the, the, the cultures and the identities of the people are basically the same, and it's impossible for them to remain enemies for long because they're effectively the same people. Um, 
and that's a that's a, that's basically what his argument is: is that R Ukraine is Russia, and uh, it's completely within his rights to to take it. And that's uh, just to reiterate, because I don't want uh, the fucking people involved, passionately involved in this foreign war, they have no investment in, uh, is extremely high. So please do not email me your hot take. I do not care. Uh, my argument is that I'm anti anti white people killing each other, and that is how this war looks to me. Um, I know that there is more to it, but that is what Putin explained to Tucker Carlson. Um, so, uh, that, that's how that, that conversation went. However, as funny as that whole argument is, and people made fun of the, the history lesson, which I thought was interesting. And I thought it was very well spoken of, you know, I'll play even a little bit of it so you can hear it. Before World War II, Poland collaborated with Hitler, and although it did not yield to Hitler's demands, it still participated in the partitioning of Czechoslovakia together with Hitler. As the Poles had not given the Danzig Corridor to Germany, it went too far, pushing Hitler to start World War II by attacking them. That's uh, an interesting, I'm sure that per part in particular, I did not actually intend to play that specific part. That's a really, that that uh, telling of, um, it's true, by the way, I, I forget the name of it. There's a small part of Czechoslovakia that when Hitler invaded after uh, the Munich Agreement, um, there's a small part of Czechoslovakia that Poland seized from them called Zaloji, I want to say is the name of it, and Zolo or Zalogia, and Zalogia in, in, today is in modern day uh, Czechia. Uh, and was, if you're wondering why Poland took it, Zalogia um, is a, at the time in, in the early 1900s, late 1800s, was very important as a coal mining operation. And to this day, there's an extraordinary amount of coal that's pulled out of Zalogia. Uh, so, no, it's not the Sudetenland. The Sudetenland was taken first, and that's the the border between Czechia and Germany, even to this day. Then, after the first the first agreement uh, where they took the Sudetenland. Um, there was a second one where Hitler demanded all of Czechia, all of modern day Czechia, and then also turned, um, supported a fascist government in Slovakia uh, called the Slovak State under Tizo. Uh, and by the way, if you are Slovakian and you go to a flea market and you find a silver coin in the 1940s with Tizo on it, Please mail that to my post office box. I do not have one. I've been looking one for one for years. I cannot find it, and I refuse to go online and buy one off the internet because that's cheating. But if you have a Tizo coin, please send that to me. Um, but during during this partitioning, Poland actually participated and took Zoologia because they wanted the coal in the industry in that area. Uh, so, um, my my point is to go back to Putin. Putin retells basically everything from the 1800s and the original um, Kievan Rus, all the way up to Catherine the Great and the Tsars of Russia incorporating Ukraine into the Imperial um, Russian territory, and then uh, the end. Uh, Ukraine remaining remaining a, a basically a, a a figment, and I not it was either a part of the Lith Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth or it was a part of Russia. It was never independent until after. Lenin had administratively divided uh, the Soviet Union to include all of that territory and Crimea, which was not at any part of time a part of the Ukrainian national identity, uh, into the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. And then after the end of the Soviet Union, uh, the, the Ukrainian SSR became the Republic of Ukraine today. And therefore, the, the whole idea of Ukraine did not exist until 1992. That is the official Russian line, and he explains this in a, in a pretty concise way all things considered in the time of 40 minutes uh, in a way that a child or a pot-bellied american hick <laughs> he can understand and perhaps sympathize with so that was um i think that the history lesson although people made fun of it because it was uh such a a, a very roundabout long-winded way to explain the answer why did uh russia invade ukraine the answer is, is that it's russian territory <laughs> give or take 45 minutes of, of history lesson even though that's the funniest part to a lot of people um this is the funniest part to me with the backing of cia of course the organization you wanted to join back in the day as i understand we should thank God they didn't let you in, although it is a serious organization. I understand. My former... Tucker Carlson does not respond to this. Uh, Putin says to his face that he knows that he tried to join the CIA. Tucker does not say anything 
Putin effortlessly moves on to the next topic and it is never brought up again. He said he did not talk about that at all. He doesn't talk about that in the after discussion. It's just brought up, dropped, and never touched again. And we should have known the entire time. It was right before our face. Um, so <laughs> Tucker Carlson wanting to be a part of the, the CIA is uh, funny to me. Um, I think there's something else I wanted to say with that. Oh, no. Oh, I just wanted to make fun of Tucker Carlson. And then I wanted to say that I think the most remarkable thing about this conversation, even if you're, again, let's say that you're a pot-bellied hick. You're watching this. You have no concern for anything involving Ukraine. Uh, but it's Tucker Carlson, so it might be interesting. And after all, you probably never heard uh, Putin speak before. What does the guy even sound like? What is... How does he, how does, how does Russian sound? I've never heard Russian in my life. <laughs> I've only heard James Bond villains pretend to do uh, a goofy Russian accent. What is, what is, what does the Russian language actually sound like? So they're listening for the first time, right? And I think that he's very eloquent. He's very smart. He's very in control of the entire conversation. When Tucker tries to redirect things, he's very, he has a very good presence where he'll say, uh, I'll answer that, but let me finish my thought. He'll finish his thought and then immediately switch to the next question. So he's good at like queuing up things that he wants to say in his brain and keeping track of it, all in all, he comes across as extremely intelligent. Um, then the same, th this comes out like the day after, by the way, literally the day after, um, or the day before, or is it the same day? It's either like, it's like within 24 hours of this thing dropping, uh, the special counsel investigating Biden for, um, for uh, his mishandling of classified information comes out. And I'll just read it. In his interview with her office, Mr. Biden's memory was worse. He did not remember when he was vice president, forgetting on the first day of the interview when his term ended. Uh, quote, if it was in 2013, when did I stop being vice president? And forgetting on the second day of the interview when his term began. Quote, in, 20, in 2009, am I still vice president? He did not remember, even within several years, when his son Boo died. I'm, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that right. Boo is his name. Uh, and his memory appeared hazy when describing the Afghan debate that was once so important to him. Among other things, he mistakenly said he had a real difference of opinion with General Carl Eikenberry, when in fact Eikenberry was an ally with whom Mr. Biden had cited approvingly in his Thanksgiving memo to President Obama. Bo? Really? Okay, Bo. That's a dumb name for a kid. I just want to let you know. Oh, look, I don't speak French. I don't speak fucking fake French either. I don't care how his name is. He's dead anyways. Does it matter? Is he offended? No. Uh, and then he, I think this, again, this is like the same day. So I think he's actually having a, he's discussing the outcome of this special counsel. So the GOP publishes their findings. And they conclude it by saying that we are not, we are electing not to try him because we believe that a jury would be too sympathetic to him in order to convict. So there's no point. People will just see him as a fumbling old man and it will just be wasted, wasted resources. So Biden is supposed to have a big talk with the media uh, to say, like, look, this is nonsense. I'm clearly lucid. You know, this is a right wing conspiracy theory. I'm not incompetent. I'm not enfeeble. I know what's going on. Um, you know, things got mishandled. It was a part of the staffer's fault, part of my fault. I take responsibility. You know, yada, yada, yada. Give a PR statement like this is bullshit. And so he fucks it up. The conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. Oh, why is it buffering? This is on Zitter. Elon Musk, upgrade your fucking servers. I think that, uh, as you know, initially the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. So, the number conduct. One, he calls um, the president of Egypt, the president of Mexico, and then he calls him Bibi when his name is El Sisi. So, he fucks it up in multiple ways there. And I just want to like repeat this. 
I think that uh, CC did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. So I how talked. To I convinced him to open the gate. Okay, let's go back. Why was it Poland against whom the war started on 1st September 1939? Poland turned out to be uncompromising and Hitler had nothing to do but start implementing his plans with Poland. By the way, the USSR, I have read some archive documents, behaved very honestly. So, just, to make, just night and day, Putin elegantly explaining the russian side of history from 18 from literally not even 1800s from the year 1890 all the way up to modern day just effortlessly going of world war ii the space on the czar and then we have this of the post war and the ukrainian ssr blah, 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 blah. perfectly eloquently tucker carlson interjects he says give me a second i'm almost done back to what he's talking about doesn't miss a beat P biden can't speak he can't talk. He can't get out a single rehearsed line. It actually hurts me. It actually hurts my soul to know that there are people out there. And if you ever listen, by the way, to Xi Jinping, Xi, oh my God, Xi Jinping speak, he's also very eloquent and he's very impassioned. And when he gives like a big rally speech, like where he expects the crowd to start cheering and stuff, like it's obvious like he's so put together he's a hundred he's like a hundred and ten percent putin is like at a hundred and ten percent different different ways of speaking but he's very present and it's just like why why do we have this as a president why do we have this feeble old man as a president it really is like a humiliation ritual look at america look at their old man president he can't even speak he doesn't know he thinks that lbb is the president of mexico <laughs> what a joke um it's just some kind of weird humiliation ritual i guess thanks for watching this clip this is willow remember to like it subscribe